Being too long-winded, I'd like to introduce Mariko Bondo. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Bondo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. I am so happy to have this opportunity. I hope it is okay. Okay. I am very happy to have this opportunity to talk about the future of Japanese women in the business world. Uh, as uh, Mr. Uh, Benis uh, introduced me, when I was the Director General for Gender Equality in Cabinet Office, um, 2003, we made a Cabinet decision till 2020. Uh, women should be uh, consist of 30% of every leadership positions, not only business, but including politics or administrations, anywhere, everywhere. Uh, but in those days, there were many, many criticize from both sides, both sides. Uh, feminist uh, people criticize, why 2020? It's 17 years later. <laughs> Why it takes uh, take so long time? And also, 30% is not high enough. Uh, the population of women is more than uh, 50. The uh, position, uh, the target should be uh, 50%. That's the criticism from the feminist. Another major uh, criticism uh, against the uh, target is there are no women who have talent, who have experience. It is a uh, uh, sabet. Uh, uh, we cannot promote women who have no experience or abilities. Uh, it will collapse, destruct Japanese corporate system. Uh, and uh, many people agreed, yes, it is very difficult. So, in those days I pursued them, it is 17 years. Yes, it may, may be, be, be impossible. Um, women should be conscious of 30% until 20, um, 2010 or 2025. But if you recruit new graduates, and give them opportunity and training and experience. There, are so, um, there will be many candidates. But, but actually, for 10 years, for 10 years, it was in the closet, the target was in the closet. No one cared. But uh, in 2012, uh, Mr. Abe come back to his positions. He declared he will do the new policy for women. Uh, he will uh, uh, do everything uh, to uh, revitalize Japanese economy. So, re uh, um, so uh, women should shine. Uh, women's shining, women's act, um, uh, katsuyaku women uh, should be the very important pillar for revitalization of Japanese economies. Not for gender equality, but for revitalize Japanese economies. Women's participation for labor is critically important. Everyone agreed. Because, you know, our Japanese uh, population is declining and our, uh, our aging uh, society is a very critical issue. So, everyone thinks for the number, shortage of the number of labor is uh, clear. So, women who stay at home should participate for the uh, labor market. But, um, Mr. Abe said, till 2020, not only the ordinary workers, but 30% of leadership position. That is very important, very important and very good target. But still, everyone uh, criticizes the same questions. Same question as uh, 10, uh, 11 years ago, same as 11 years ago. 
Uh, there are uh, enough number of women who can be the positions. Yes, of course, there are many uh, women uh, in the uh, working uh, labor market, but almost every women don't have enough experience to be managers. Uh, they are clerical work, service work, um, uh, some uh, simple, not well uh, skilled workers. Um, and also, another problem uh, is still Japanese women suffering to have two responsibilities, two responsibilities in the workplace and also at families. Yes, um, in, um, from uh, 1975, Japanese government do a lot of uh, policies to improve the status of women. In 1985, we had uh, equal uh, employment opportunity law. In 1991, we have a child uh, raise deep law. Now it is uh, enhanced. Uh, every woman, every woman worker can take uh, 18 months uh, paid leap to take care of the child. I think this is one of the best um, legislation uh, for working uh, women, working mothers. Um, and uh, another uh, equal, um, gender equal society, basic law, something like that. But still, not many women can keep their job. Why? Why? Uh, not only the uh, legislation, not only the policies, but uh, we have uh, still many individual barriers to overcome as women. And also, Many uh, individual uh, male people have their barriers inside. Uh, yeah, first, women's uh, barrier is still we don't have uh, enough confidence, self confidence, uh, to pursue our own career. Um, uh, because we don't have the en uh, enough number of role models. Um, many of women think after they have a child, it, it must be very difficult to have the uh, job and uh, families. So many women give up before challenge, in spite of the many, many supportive uh, systems. Uh, many people uh, quit their uh, good jobs. Before challenge, that's my frustration. Before challenge, the, uh, the reason is that still many Japanese women think to be successful mother is better than successful career women. <laughs> Japanese women's status is not high enough, but status of mother, status of mother, or status of housewife is better than other industrialized countries, I think, I'm afraid. So, many women choose to be successful uh, mother at home, home to taking uh, care of their children. And second reason for women themselves is that uh, we don't have the enough um, experiences and the uh, uh, skills for businesses. Now, many women are going to higher education. Uh, more than 45% uh, of the women are going to uh, four-year uh, university, and 12% uh, of women going to two-year colleges. But uh, most of them are going to so-called liberal arts education, or some biological uh, sciences. Not many going to engineering, um, uh, information technologies, or uh, law or economics. It is increasing, but not for uh, natural sciences. So uh, many uh, women don't have enough background. And also, they, they did not 
have uh, opportunities to get uh, experiences. Many Japanese traditional companies good to give education and training for their male employees after they recruited. As you know, uh, Japanese students did not study hard at universities. But after they get into the uh, corporations, they get a very hard training. But unfortunately, many women, uh, when they get into the company, they are always said, oh, women is better than uh, their uh, counterpart boys. But after five years, 10 years, go, boys are going up and uh, get more opportunities, more experiences, and grown up to be the good managers. But many Japanese traditional uh, company says, oh, women will quit in a few years after they have uh, married our ch ch child. It is no return for investment for education for women. So the gap between men and women is increasing by, by the age, uh, by the years. So I think we must uh, give uh, education or trainings for women in middle career. Uh, so uh, our university is just bringing the new business uh, college for women in middle careers from this October. Uh, please recommend the opportunity for, for your uh, callings. But anyway, the second is, uh, and also third is, uh, um, third reason is a uh, lack of self-confidence. Uh, many, many women, including um, Sheryl Sandberg of uh, Lean In, Lean In, she said that uh, she is not so capable enough to get the executive position. Even Sheryl Sandberg, even in the United States, we may have some uh, mental barriers to succeed for their own um, uh, success in careers. I'm so lucky, I'm so lucky, I have an opportunity, but I don't have the enough abilities, enough capabilities. Many Japanese women uh, who have a good position still afraid uh, their own, afraid they don't have their own capabilities. I hope uh, have to, I, they get more uh, self-confidence to pursue their own um, careers, their own success of their own careers. But it's not only, of course, it's not only uh, women's problem. Um, all uh, male people, uh, male employee in Japanese traditional uh, corporation also have troubles. Yes, in the corporation, they can do everything inside, but they can not uh, so capable outside, outside corporations. We both men and women have uh, no uh, strong self-confidence. It is also one of the uh, reasons of our education. We must change. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, that is uh, uh, our women's side problem. But of course, uh, corporation or males themselves uh, have a lot of the prejudice against women. Uh, one of the uh, reasons is uh, they uh, also don't have the experience uh, to uh, experiences to work with women, especially capable with capable women. They are accustomed to be to work with assistant or to chat with the bar madams, <laughs> uh, but they don't have the enough experience to work with. Um, more capable women, more smart women beside him. They are not happy to work with women. And the second uh, reason is 
as I mentioned. Yes, the uh, Japanese traditional uh, cooperation don't have the, uh, don't give the opportunity to women employees uh, on, on the job trainings. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, their boss, male boss, don't have uh, experience to educate uh, women followers, women subjects. So they are sometimes very sweet, too sweet, and spoiled, especially when she is young and beautiful. <laughs> and they are not they are un, um, embarrassed with the women in the above middle years old. <laughs> but anyway, yes, yes, some Japanese women can un understand their mentalities. But anyway, so it is very difficult for uh, uh, Japanese women to get good education and training in workplace. So, so and. And the uh, third is a very critical thing. Uh, Japanese um, evaluate system is still uh, rely on so-called uh, so input, not by the outcomes. How long you work, how you contribute for, how you are involved uh, for the uh, problem of corporations, such kind of the input is a, a point to evaluate the employees. Uh, please work 24 hours for a company. It is impossible for women who have families. Maybe it is impossible for ordinary men too. But we don't have the uh, evaluation systems uh, by uh, outcomes. And I'm afraid, when I was working in government, we have no overwork pay. Please overwork as long as you like. <laughs> so many, many Japanese um, public servants stay longer, sometimes till midnight, uh, no, no, bit, not till midnight, not uh, be the early morning of next day. No, I'm afraid. Um, uh, after white color uh, exception introduced, many, many Japanese men work long hours to demonstrate they are contributing for the uh, companies. And so my uh, suggestion is please uh, press companies to pay uh, overwork pay as long as they work. If now it is overtime work premium is 25 percent, but if it becomes 50 percent, every employer prohibited too much long time work. But anyway, the long time work um, work system uh, is evaluated on the lack of the evaluation system of uh, by outcomes by outcomes. So I think not only the registration um, by the change of women and by the change of male, by the change of the uh, corporations, uh, we can make the target come true without the government um, push, the government policy and registrations. Yes, in this diet, Abe government will propose a new legislation to promote uh, women in leadership position. But I'm afraid without change of both men and women, uh, it will not come, uh, come to truth. Please watch the change of Japanese society and corporations. Japanese people is very much think about how they, how uh, we are evaluated by other uh, peoples. Third party's opinion is very important. <laughs> I believe Mr. Abe-san uh, encouraged by the good reaction of the uh, foreign company, countries. Everywhere, if she speaks 
about uh, I will do for Japanese women. So she gets the applause. So now she changed his mind. And she really wanted to push uh, women to the decision making positions. I hope uh, his dream will come true for Japanese, not only for Japanese women, but for Japanese men and Japanese societies. Thank you very much. To introduce uh, Professor Yashiro, uh, he is a uh, worldly and very experienced person who is really the right guy to talk about this topic for this seminar. Um, he was a, uh, a PhD in economics at the University of Maryland. He worked in the OECD. He is now, of course, a professor uh, of economics at uh, Showa Women's University. But some 10 years ago, uh, back when, of course, Dr. Bond was active as well, he was on uh, Prime Minister Koizumi's, uh, the, the Regulatory Reform Committee of the uh, Council on Economic and Fiscal Policy and where many of these things were, were already being discussed back then as it respects the labor law and labor practices and that sort of thing. Um, and ever since then, he has been really the person to go to to get state-of-the-art advice about where Japan should head. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce, introduce uh, Professor Yasho. Please, let's give him a hand. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it is my great pleasure to be invited to such an honorable lunch meeting. Um, I got my PhD from University of Maryland, and uh, the title of the thesis was uh, uh, Male-Female Wage Gap in Japan, because my advisor strongly, uh, how do you say, uh, directed that topic. And actually, she said that without, uh, if you take uh, another title, I will not uh, supervise you, so <laughs> it's a kind of, uh, because she was, she was a kind of gender-oriented uh, professor, but uh, thanks to her, uh, this uh, male-female uh, issues become one, one of my franchises, so I really appreciate her. And uh, so today's topic, uh, uh, as a President Bond already said that there was a, a speech by Prime Minister Abe uh, as a World Assembly for Women Tokyo. Uh, and uh, he said a very interesting thing, like, as you are well aware, we cannot say that today's Japan is a straight A model. I think nobody thinks Japan is a straight A model, but anyway, and uh, appointing women to executive positions. And Japan has a target of having women occupy 30% of the leadership position by 2020. But uh, we have only six years to go, and currently our uh, ratio of the uh, uh, female manager is just uh, above the 10 percent. And uh, so Japan and Korea is a quite outlier among OECD countries. How can we triple uh, this ratio in uh, six years to come? And uh, I think uh, many Japanese leaders don't consider it very seriously. And, uh, but I think there is a way to achieve that. That is to change our current uh, employment practices. Otherwise, it's impossible while maintaining the current employment practices and uh, triple this ratio. So what Prime Minister Abe strongly uh, promised this target means he's very eager to change the current employment practices. Uh, that is the real message of this uh, target. And, uh, well, uh, as uh, President Bando said, that uh, there is an increasing enrollment ratio of courage, uh, four years courage uh, by women, and women's uh, enrollment ratio is uh, uh, catching up to that of uh, men uh, quite rapidly. But nevertheless, uh, uh, labor force participation of uh, highly educated women in Japan and Korea is quite low. Why? Because uh, they are simply drop out uh, in the uh, midst of their career, so cannot reach uh, up to the manager position. And uh, uh, this issue, uh, quite low level of uh, female managers ratio, is closely related with Another serious issue of Japan that is quite low fertility ratio. Actually, those two issues are 
just like a two sides of the same coin, because both come from the Japanese employment practices. And uh, recently, yes, uh, this uh, so-called M-shaped labor force pattern of women uh, is quite famous. And uh, most of the OECD countries, uh, such M-shaped pattern is not uh, 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 well known. Uh, only in Japan uh, it's existing. But uh, in Japan, uh, the uh, bottom of this M is going up gradually, so which looks like uh, the situation is improving in Japan. But it's quite misleading, because uh, if we decompose this M-shaped pattern, between uh, unmarried women and married women. Actually, this M-shaped pattern is a composite of uh, weighted average of unmarried and married women. And uh, if we look at the uh, time series change of this uh, uh, unmarried and married women, it doesn't change very much. Uh, it's going up only for the uh, unmarried women, but for the married women, it's very stable. So uh, the reason why then M-shaped pattern changes is simply because uh, more and more unmarried women, <laughs> that's unmarried women. So this is not a desirable thing because uh, that makes Japan's uh, 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 falling fertility ratio even uh, serious. So those people who are opposing to this 30% target of female managers say that uh, if we really seek this target, that will cause, uh, that will bring about out further uh, falling uh, level of Japan's fertility ratio. So actually, uh, there is a clear trade-off between, uh, uh, excuse me, this is a fertility ratio in Japan. Uh, it used to be quite high uh, right after the war, uh, 4.5, which means average Japanese household have four or five children. But it's falling quite rapidly and it stays as uh, stable at 2.1. That is a quite ideal number because uh, with 2.1 fertility ratio, population stabilizes. But after that, uh, it's declined steadily over time. And this is a uh, year of uh, first age of the first marriage for women. Uh, women uh, become uh, later and later uh, when they make a decision for. Uh, uh, marriage. And uh, so uh, this is closely related with the falling fertility ratio because in Japan uh, there are only 98% of the children are born from married couples. So unless you get married, uh, children are uh, seldom uh, born. So actually governments are worried about how to encourage the women to get married. I mean, so that is a, a point. And also this is a serious trade-off between uh, higher uh, female labor force participation on the horizontal axis and the fertility ratio. So this is almost the same as time series development. So higher female labor force participation, the lower the uh, female uh, fertility ratio. Recently there is some uh, reversal, but we are not sure whether this is a, a, a permanent trend. So this is a real uh, uh, issues. Uh, in order to uh, increase the number of female uh, managers, uh, you have to raise the female labor force participation, but that will uh, seriously cause the falling fertility ratio. So, uh, how can we uh, cope with this problem? So, we have to seriously look at the Japanese employment practices. I'm sure you know a lot of Japanese employment practices, and uh, uh, this is a package of employment contract. Unlike the uh, United States or European countries, this is not the employment contract on job basis. It's, uh, there are no specific contract on what kind of job we are assigned when we are first uh, employed by the company. You are just employed. 
and uh, that's all. So it's a kind of uh, blank, uh, white uh, blank check contract, and it's very risky in that sense. And uh, so based on this blank uh, check contract, uh, you are guaranteed that long-time employment commitment and seniority-based promotion practices. When I work for OECD, and uh, my colleague uh, said about the uh, Japanese employment practices, uh, they, he said that uh, it's just like a heaven, you see. Once you are hired by a large company, you are never fired, and uh, your wages are going up uh, automatically. So what kind of paradise is it, it is? I mean, but uh, I feel very, how do you say, uh, 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 strange about this kind of a statement. Yes, it looks like a paradise, but actually it's uh, quite far from that because uh, we have to work very hard and uh, the persistently long working hours and frequently shifting frequent shifting of the workplace. Uh, you are ordered to go to Hokkaido, Okinawa, or Malaysia, or uh, even in uh, Africa, and uh, the employee has no choice. It's, uh, in, it's a package contract with this long-term employment security and uh, seniority-based promotion. And uh, why Japanese uh, workers uh, can accept such kind of uh, overall contract? Because there is an implicit assumption of full-time homemaker. So, company actually hiring not only the male employee, but his family at the same time. So that's why seniority-based wage uh, like that. When you are getting older and when you have children, you have higher wages that will compensate for the life experience expenses. So without full-time homemakers, such kind of a contract is almost uh, impossible. So that causes a problem when uh, women uh, are highly educated, they work just like a, a man, but uh, she doesn't have a housewife, you see. So actually it's a handicapped race. Uh, she has to uh, compete with a male counterpart with full-time wife. So it's uh, quite, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, handicapped race. And uh, uh, when a, a male employee gets married, uh, his supervisor uh, congratulates you. Uh, uh, now you have a good wife, you can work better for the company. But uh, when female employee married, uh, she, was, she is sympathized. Uh, you have now a big uh, luggage as husband. And uh, so it's a kind of asymmetrical uh, 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 me, uh, marriage means a kind of asymmetrical uh, effect between male and female. That's why she has to choose and uh, whether to uh, continue to work uh, for the uh, managers or uh, retired or uh, moving to the uh, part-time jobs in order to raise the children. So this trade-off of women uh, between male work style or child raising is a major cause for the fewer ratio of female managers and uh, uh, lower fertility ratio. Of course, there is an exception, like uh, President Bando. Uh, she is very successful and she has uh, two daughters, I think. And, but uh, with that, well, Japanese employment system needs a superwoman who can achieve, uh, you see, uh, both target. And uh, obviously not uh, all the women are like uh, superwoman. And uh, so we have to change uh, the Japanese employment practices so that normal women can pursue the uh, same uh, uh, jobs, you see. And uh, how to do that? Uh, well, I think uh, the first thing is government has to change. And uh, many people say that male manager's mind uh, has to be changed, but it's entirely impossible. And uh, as Karl Marx said, you see, in order to change the people's mind, you have to change the institution. I quite agree with him on that point, you see. <laughs> uh, and uh, so government has to take initiative to change the system. And the first thing uh, government can do 
is uh, this social structure. Uh, current social structure, either a tax system or social securities, are implicitly based on the uh, single earner household where husband to work and uh, with full time homemaker. And they have a quite advantage either in uh, income tax or social security insurances. And uh, that system was established uh, not very far. Uh, it was established in the 1970s, but uh, even in 1980, uh, those single earner household accounts for the majority. But uh, it's changing rapidly, and now the uh, two earners household, where both male and female work, uh, accounts for the majority. But still the social institution remains as it is. And uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, said that uh, he's going to change the uh, income tax schemes. But what is more important is the social security, and where uh, full-time homemakers are, are granted uh, the pension and the health care benefit without paying uh, any contribution. Or uh, her husband doesn't pay his uh, contribution. So this is a very serious issue, but uh, it has to be changed uh, for the uh, changed. And also for the labor market, uh, what is important is uh, labor market reform. This 30% uh, female manager ratio is closely related with other labor market uh, reform, such as uh, more uh, flex, uh, transparent rule for laying off workers. And uh, in Japan, uh, uh, the problem is not necessarily the labor regulation is too rigid, uh, but there are no regulations concerning the uh, layoff, and uh, judges simply decide. In other words, the case law is quite important in the case of the Japanese labor market. And, but this is quite unfair because those workers, those rich workers who are employed by large companies, supported by rich union, they can fight uh, in the court as uh, long as uh, two, hour, two years or three years. Uh, so that they can win and get a lot of compensation. But for the workers in the small companies, uh, they, have, they cannot afford to such things, so they are laid off, off uh, free, you see. So there is a conflict of interest between workers, workers uh, in the large company and workers in the small companies. And uh, so the same can be said with employers. Uh, K. Danlen is a, a group of large companies. Uh, they prefer uh, the uh, uh, monetary compensation for layoff because they want to, uh, how do you say, settle the, uh, those uh, uh, conflict uh, uh, more transparent way. But on the other hand, uh, managers or executives of small companies strongly object that idea. Why? Because they are quite happy at the current stage. They can lay off the workers with minor compensation because those workers in a small company cannot appeal to the uh, court. You see? Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it's okay. over. Okay. So, uh, sorry. It's an additional statement. <laughs> Thank you very much for reminding me, anyway. So, what I mean is, uh, uh, unlike the case of United States or Europe, in Japan there is no, or there is not much conflict between capitalists and labor. Instead, we have a conflict between capitalists, between workers, particularly the conflict between workers, workers in a large company, and workers in a small company, and uh, regular workers versus non-regular workers. As uh, in Japan, non-regular workers are used as uh, uh, shock absorbers uh, in the, uh, during the cyclical fluctuation for assuring the employment of the regular workers. So actually there is a conflict of interest. There is a conflict of interest between male workers and female workers. So those conflicts between the workers, uh, the Ministry of Labor's uh, Council cannot 
copies at all because there are no representatives of the non-regular workers and uh, workers from the small companies. Uh, so actually, the Ministry of Labor are not doing well for settle such conflict. That's why Prime Minister Abe or uh, the initiative is quite important to, uh, how do you say, force the current labor market uh, moving to a more market-based one. Uh, I don't criticize the Japanese employment practices because it used to be a very efficient schemes up to 1980s. Why? Because uh, at that time, uh, Japanese economies are growing very fast, so that the uh, uh, company needs uh, skilled workers as much as possible. So at that time, uh, lay of the workers is nonsense. Uh, in the time of small recessions, they can keep the excess workers so that uh, those workers can be fully utilized in the following uh, booming period. So Japanese employment practices was quite rational up to 1980s. But uh, since 1990s, when Japanese economy plunged in the long recession, uh, the, this excess workers issue become a quite important uh, problem for the Japanese economy. So permanent uh, Japanese employment uh, system per se could be good or bad, depending on the economic circumstances. But uh, this point, uh, not only the labor union, but uh, k -Dan -Len, they don't understand. Because they are trapped with the uh, successful experience of the past. So it's very difficult to change. Uh, so I talked to the labor union leaders, and they say that the Japanese economy may come back to the uh, high e gross uh, economy uh, as it used to be, then, then we don't have to change the employment practices. You see, such kind of, uh, how do you say, uh, optimistic uh, expectation could be shared by the uh, KDAN and to some extent. So we have to persuade them. Japan is facing with a rapidly proceeding aging of the population, globalization, and uh, more uh, IT revolution. So we have to change our our scheme in order to uh, meet with a uh, changing uh, international uh, uh, situation. But uh, the power of economists is quite weak in Japan, and uh, uh, our proposal is often neglected. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Prime Minister Abe this time uh, persuaded, and he want to change the current situation, and I hope this abenomics uh, will succeed, and hope this uh, uh, American Chamber and Commerce in Japan will uh, cooperate us <laughs> to move uh, Japan into the uh, right directions. And I think we have a common interest, uh, you see, in uh, United States and Japan. Although many uh, bureaucrats in Japan are uh, not very uh, happy with the American pressures, but uh, I think I uh, think uh, one newspaper once said that the U.S. government has a very healthy opposing party in Japan <laughs> because our opposing party is quite unrealistic and uh, so they don't, uh, uh, they are not uh, representing the interest of consumers. And uh, so, of course, American government uh, are uh, putting a pressure to Japan, reflecting the interest of American companies, but it's also benefit for the Japanese consumers who are benefited by the fair competition between American company and Japanese companies. And that kind of idea is quite a few uh, in Japan. And finally, I'm inspired by the speech by uh, President Bando. Uh, in the time of US-Japan uh, trade fiction, there is uh, Carla Hills, Mrs. Carla Hills, representing a US, uh, uh, USTR, uh, trade representative. And that was the first time for Japanese bureaucrats to negotiate with women, you see. They had no such experience before. And that has a very good executive, uh, educational effect among the Japanese bureaucrats that women do negotiate and, uh, <laughs> with uh, Japanese uh, high officials. And uh, so we need more uh, tough women negotiators from the United States and Europe in order to educate uh, the Japanese bureaucrats and politicians. And, uh, 
uh, it should be not only the foreigner, but the uh, Japanese uh, we, women's negotiator as well. But uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. And now we're going to start the question and answer period. And as the, uh, the master of ceremonies or, or whatever it is, I have three rules. <laughs> three rules here. Uh, very simple. First, uh, state your name and affiliation, if you would, when you uh, stand up and, and somebody gives you the mic and you give your question. Second rule is remember after that when you speak, this is on the record. Uh, so be careful what you say. <laughs> uh, thirdly, uh, rule, special rule of the occasion is no three part questions are allowed. No two part questions are allowed. One question is allowed. Thank you very much. All right, let's get started. Any, uh, anybody want to launch first? Thank you, sir. Can we have a mic over here? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your impressive speech. Uh, my name is Seiji Nada from Metlife KK. I personally had the same ex experience as uh, maybe President Bando, when I used to work for Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs for 10 years. We had a meeting like 26 o'clock, and we, we, we have received no pay overwork at once. So that's why I'm here working for a U.S. insurance company, who just pay, for, pay me for overwork at once. Anyway, uh, so uh, having worked having work at the Japanese government, I know that if you know, government changes, if prime minister changes, you know, often the policy loses the momentum. So my question is, well, well, we are happy that uh, Prime Minister Abe has a has, uh, government again, but if Prime Minister Abe quits, or, you know, it can, it can lose the momentum. So how, you know, the government, not only the government, but also, you know, each private com company can keep this momentum of this human empowerment, or, or, you know. So, um, you know, 2020 is still far away. So, mm -hmm. we, how should we keep mm -hmm. this moment um, until two, 2020? Thank yeah. you. Well, this 30% uh, female manager's target is not Mr. Abe's personal commitment, but it's an official decision of the government. So, that will surely uh, combine, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, that stay as it is, even Prime Minister Abe leaves the office. But uh, I understand your uh, skepticism, and uh, so why don't we propose the mid-term target, rather than 30% in 2020, maybe 20% in some time between. 20% uh, means uh, before Prime Minister Abe leaves the office. So, <laughs> you see, so in that case, even though the 30% target was not possible, at least we can achieve more than 20% target. I think that's a more political way, pr practical way of achieving this target. I think 30% in 2020 is a bit, uh, I mean, uh, ambiguous one, as you say that. We need a mid-term target. Mm. Uh, who, who's next for questions? Anybody? Oh, please, Rick. Name your, give your name and affiliation, if you would, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah. okay. Thank you very much. Um, well, it's a long story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's simply due to superstition, you see. This is a special year, 1966, according to the Chinese calendar. It comes every 60 years. And the uh, women born in this year is so harsh. And uh, so nobody want to marry her. So that's why uh, Japanese family try to avoid the baby on that year. But uh, it turned out to be strange because uh, babies born in this year has a big advantage, you see. They can enter the college easily, they can marry easy. <laughs> so actually, uh, anyway, um, it's a, due to the superstition, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the Japanese people are superstitious, because they are risk averse. They say, I don't believe such nonsense, but somebody else may believe the, such stupid, <laughs> so just to avoid uh, the case. And also, it shows a, a strong, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, 
birth control uh, of the Japanese family. Uh, it's a very <laughs> anyway. It's not very uh, economically important. C okay. Can we can we possibly invent a superstition that has the opposite effect? <laughs> suddenly increasing fertility over the next five oh, years. Superstition is a traditional one. You cannot invent it. So it's maybe. Next question. Anyone? Yeah. Anyone? Please in the back. Check. Please give your name and affiliation. Thanks. Hi, thank you. My name is Jennifer Shinkai from N World. Um, I wanted to disagree with one of your comments about mm. participation and fertility. Mm. Um, I think in Europe, the data which I've seen suggests a different pattern. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen in, I think, France in particular has a very high um, engagement rate and a high fertility <laughs> as well. So that was just a, a point I wanted to make. But my question was about the, you've talked about changing institutions. Mm. What are the plans for maybe how education can have an impact and what is the education ministry's ideas for how we can change in the schools, how boys and girls think about uh, what a family looks like, what a great negotiator looks like, and how can schools impact uh, the future leaders of Japan? Mm. Well, uh Yes, uh, that's important, but uh, I don't think, uh, of course education is important, but uh, it is based on the idea that the people are misguided, uh, but actually I don't think so as an economist, because uh, this is a kind of discrimination against women, and we have an economics of discrimination, and uh, prevented uh, invented by Gary Becker, and uh, he said that uh, uh, discrimination should be uh, whipped away based on the market mechanism. Uh, the logic is following, you see, if there is a group of being discriminated, either uh, race or religion or gender, they can be hired at uh, lower wages. So if it's a market economy, why don't they hire them? And if there are enough competition, uh, the wage, this wage gap will be narrowed. So this is a basic idea of economics of discrimination. But actually, there is a wage gap quite stable in the case of Japan between male and female. Then we have to have an, uh, another theory explaining the uh, male-female wage gap. Actually, it's the main theme of my dissertation. And uh, Japanese discrimination against women is, in a sense, rational one. That's why it's stable. A rational one doesn't mean that I can accept that because it's economically rational. Why? Because, again, this is as already stated by President Bando, in Japanese company, there is a heavy emphasis on on-the-job training. And uh, unlike the uh, off-the-job training or uh, education at school, there are no scale economy in this on-the-job training. In order to train one person, uh, nobody can be accepted uh, as a substitute. So it's a, a handmade uh, training. So, so company try to choose the uh, employee who are given a good training. That is a potentially capable person to accept the very important on-the-job training and also stability in the job. So, in the case of women, because of the household responsibilities uh, or uh, uh, separation of the family, for example, her husband may be appointed in a rural offices, and she has to choose whether live separately or uh, quit the company and uh, moving together with her husband. So, anyway, women employee as a group has a higher turnover ratio. So that's why company hesitate to give better on-the-job training uh, to women. And uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, uh, the, the potential ability of women is lower than men, rather than its opposite. But nevertheless, uh, company has to be risk averse in order to, they don't want to waste uh, this uh, on-the-job training opportunity. So uh, how to cope with that after having such kind of uh, observation? 
then uh, we have to reduce the uh, uh, opportunity of on-the-job training. That's one policy uh, implication. And actually, in the Japanese company, in my view, they are over-investing to the on-the-job training. You see, uh, again, this is a, a, a tradition of the uh, uh, time when Japanese economy is growing very fast. On the job training is a kind of investment in human capital, so it has to be some optimum standard, optimum level. But uh, still Japanese companies are investing too much on this uh, human capital based on the idea of Japanese economy is growing fast. Fast means 4% or 5%, but actually we are growing at 2% and 3%, so which means that we have to change the portfolio of employment away from heavy on-the-job training worker to uh, more general training workers. And, uh, but, uh, so, uh, so that's why the, uh, there is a kind of failure of the Japanese personal department of large companies based on the uh, idea of the uh, good old days. And what can government do? You see, government cannot intervene in the personal decision making of individual company, but what can, what government can do is try to change the labor law, which is neutral to the uh, labor turnover. Currently, Japanese labor law implicitly favors the uh, employ permanent employment rather than flexible employment. So you have to make it in the neutral one. And uh, so, in order to do that, uh, we have to make a new law, labor contract. And uh, rather than deregulation, we have to make a regulation uh, which is more fair uh, to the labor market uh, turning over. Because currently, uh, because there are no clear law con uh, concerning this labor contract, case law dominates. And case law is, uh, how do you say, uh, very protective to the uh, workers, and that uh, increases the cost of uh, hiring workers, uh, both Japanese and foreign firms. So that is the uh, most important essence of Abeno mix, we have to make a clear, transparent rule for employment contract so that uh, uh, when company want to lay off workers, they can do uh, at the reasonable cost. And uh, so actually this 30% of the female manager uh, is uh, quite closely related with the labor market uh, issues. When uh, both men and women uh, uh, leave and uh, coming back, coming to the uh, country, which means a more flexible labor market, there is a, the gap between the stability between male and female is declining. And actually, in foreign affiliated company in Japan, uh, the ratio of female managers is in general higher. Uh, than Japanese traditional company. Why? Because foreign affiliated company in Japan, both male and female moves quite frequently. So there are not much difference in stability between male and female. That is uh, one of the solutions. And uh, am I clear to you? <laughs> I mean, okay. So this is another discrimination based on the, uh, how do you call it? The, uh, more, uh, anyway, it's a rational discrimination, so we have to react rationally to this. Uh, just, just to add to that, some of you may know the uh, Growth Strategy Task Force has a viewpoint on labor mobility, yeah. which gets at a lot of the same issues, yeah. and in yeah. fact, uh, it's sort of stunning to see how much, I think, our analysis is exactly in line with uh, mm -hmm. Professor Yashiro's analysis, and proposes a new kind of labor contract of long-term duration that would not replace the existing kind, yeah. but simply add an additional option for companies to, to select. But one of the things that comes up in that report, uh, that, that uh, analysis, that viewpoint, is that over the last 20 years, the off-the-job training expense of Japanese companies, if anything, has been declining very significantly, mm -hmm. which is of concern, because if that's the case, it means that companies are investing much less in off-the-job training when they should be increasing it. Mm -hmm. About, we have a question in the back here, if I could go yeah. on to you. Thank you very much. If your name and affiliation. Uh, sorry, from Bering Ingelheim. Whenever gender diversity is discussed, there's a topic of uh, uh, quota, if it's good to have a quota or not. 
Uh, from your speech, it sounds like you are favoring having a quarter fixed, fixed percentage in fixed year. Why are you supporting having quarter? Well, first, 30% uh, is the uh, average of the, uh, how do you say, uh, OCD countries. So it can be a kind of milk model. Why not 50%? Uh, because, uh, well, there is uh, some disadvantage for women, uh, household responsibility and so on. So maybe it, in future, maybe 50%, but uh, in as a uh, more reality, 30% is a uh, uh, normal standard of most of the uh, countries in OECD. So that's the first target. And uh, second, uh, is it a fountain Action. It's a very uh, delicate question. Yes, it's a part of the affirmative action on the condition of labor market flexibility, you see. If it's affirmative action without the labor market flexibility, I think it uh, causes more harm than merit. I'm sure that the Japanese company will create a lot of fake female managers. For example, managers without no sub subordinate. That is not good. So uh, my point is if government can succeed uh, in liberalizing or make the labor market more uh, flexible, automatically female share uh, in managers will go up. I don't know whether it's 30 percent, 40 percent, or 20 percent. Uh, so, in a sense, it's a positive action, not an affirmative action, uh, uh, in a more rigid sense. It's very conditional, and uh, I try to explain the quite low ratio of female managers in Japan as a fever when it comes uh, when you get sick. You mean uh, just lowering the fever doesn't solve the uh, problems, you have to cure the sick, then fever will automatically go down. Such kind of uh, mechanism is important uh, for this 30% target. Okay, that's a great analogy, thank you. I think we have a question here and then uh, Brian is next. Did, did I, is that okay? We have someone in the bo <laughs> just behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay, sorry. Traffic control. Okay, thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, my name is uh, Furukawa. 100% uh, Japanese. <laughs> uh, I worked for a two, three Japanese companies for 30 years, and then uh, I'm not work. I've, I've never worked for the government, but uh, I worked for fairly large companies, and I know that um, there is a big um, atmosphere. Women are um, hesitated to leave office early mm -hmm. because a lot of men are staying in the office till late. So I think the, um, the most of the, um, the uh, managers should leave the office early as well as younger men workers, but they don't leave the office. Sometimes they get paid, they depend on their life for the over wage on, on the and overtime uh, job. Actually, one, there is a regulation to prohibit the double jobs unless uh, you are part-time workers. I think that the regulation should be, uh, I mean, whipped away, so that uh, uh, if you work really hard for money, you can have a double job. And if you don't work uh, very hard, you can leave earlier, or I mean, don't do the overtime hour uh, work. And uh, that's more fair than simply give overtime hours payment uh, to in, by the same uh, companies. And uh, actually, having a double job is quite important for uh, changing jobs. You see, it's very risky to change from one company to another. Uh, so if you have a double job, you can simply shift the weight from one company to another. And if you are sure that you can work well in the second company, you can simply move. So actually, the deregulation of the labor market, which is not well known, is uh, this regulation on prohibiting the double jobs. And uh, also, uh, working hour regulation has to be changed on the performance pay basis, towards the performance pay basis, than uh, simply current uh, mechanical uh, 
hours of work. Actually, there is a conflict of interest between workers. As you said, young workers, male and female, uh, female workers, and uh, those other workers who want to finish the work quite efficiently uh, without doing the overtime hours, while there is a middle-aged workers who are not very efficient and who want to earn more money. Anyway, it's only your wife who is waiting at home. So it's more comfortable to stay at the uh, office uh, from the Japanese uh, typical uh, middle uh, men's uh, uh, ideas, you see. Not the American midwife who are very, how do you say, gentle uh, at the house, uh, but not necessarily the, in the case of Japan, anyway. Uh, sorry, it's uh, on the record. I, mean, I, I, I have a Japanese wife, so I understand. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So we have a next question. I think Brian, you're next. Jim, did you have a question too? You do, okay. Brian Norton, uh, chair of the, yeah. uh, what was it again? Globalization Labor Diversity uh, Committee. My question is, I, I honestly think that the number of managerial jobs in Japan has shrunk mm. due yeah. to yeah. Uh, shrinking workforces and companies. Yeah. You look at Panasonic, they've basically laid yeah. off 10,000 people. Yeah. And they've also said that they're hiring 75% of mm. their workforce outside of yeah. Japan. So that means fewer managerial positions for Japanese people in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other reason is, is simply the offshoring of production. Yeah, Up right. until now, managerial positions have mm -hmm. been based upon making things yeah. and those managers yeah. who managed those people who made those things. Mm -hmm. So looking at the, the structural changes to the position of manager, yeah. How do you see an integration of women into the economic work for, in, the workforce as managers? Yeah, yeah. That's a very good question. And uh, actually, uh, not only due to the globalization of the company's activities, uh, maybe flattening of the uh, company's high hierarchies, manager positions declining. But uh, what is important is the ratio, not the actual amount of the uh, position of the manager position. Anyway, the labor force is shrinking at the same time. So what is important is the ratio. And uh, uh, yes, uh, many people worry in Japan that uh, if female manager's ratio is uh, going up, that will discourage the work incentive of the males. Uh, managers, there is a conflict, but uh, I don't think so because uh, that kind of argument implicitly based on the idea that the manager position is good for everybody. That's a basic concept in Japan. In other words, the uh, manager position is a gift from the company to a worker who work loyally to the company. But it's a nonsense. It shouldn't be a gift. It's an obligation that to, to be a manager of higher responsibilities. And uh, I realized that when I work uh, for OECD, uh, I did. I, I work as an economist in OECD, which was exactly the same work as I had in the Japanese government. But the work style is so different. One of the major difference is managers work so hard. I mean, compared with uh, his subordinate. Why? Because uh, normal employees uh, work only his jobs and nothing else because it's a job-related uh, contract. And if there is sudden uh, work or somebody quit, somebody leave uh, uh, by sick, then the manager can work uh, not only his own duties, but the uh, duties of his men who uh, don't work. So actually, manager's responsibility is so high and uh, uh, very heavy. And that's why uh, many of my OECD colleagues don't want to be a manager. And uh, that's what we need in Japan, because we are aging rapidly and the manager position is declining, as you say that. Mm. Then how to uh, allocate the manager position? Why don't you use a market, you see? If there is a declining manager position, price it higher or <laughs> uh, uh, makes the uh, manager's responsibility 
more a uh, burden, I mean, so that uh, many people say, no, I don't want to be a manager, <laughs> you see. <laughs> That's exactly the OECD style, and uh, then the uh, personal department uh, is, uh, uh, burden will be declining, but it's not necessarily the current situation, and uh, that's why reforming the labor market is not only objected by the labor union, but uh, KDN as well. So actually, this is not only this 30% uh, managerial target, but the uh, declining fertility ratio, uh, more work-life balance, and uh, those things has been advocated for many years in Japan, but nothing changes. Why both labor and uh, company want to stick to current employment practices. And actually changing the employment practice in Japan is almost a taboo. So that taboo has to be distracted by strong leadership like Prime Minister Abe. Jim, next to the last question. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking as many questions as you have. This has been very enlightening. Um, observationally, I think, coming out of school, Japanese frequently graduate for a company rather than a career. Yeah. So, for example, I was talking with the senior HR director at Google, and they said the weirdest thing in Japan compared to everywhere else in the world is they'll have people who are interviewing with Goldman Sachs, yeah. Mitsubishi Shoji, and Google. Mm. You know, Google on the West Coast to be like Facebook, Google, maybe eBay or something, right? And that brand value seems to be what most people coming out of school are looking for, perhaps mid-career as well, I don't know. But as educators and as professors and president of university, how do you help people self-direct their careers or start thinking about, I own this career? We've talked about the labor market in aggregate, but each of those, ag the entire aggregate is composed of a series of individuals doing things. How do we encourage that educationally? And what role models do you look for? Mm. Well, it's a very <laughs> difficult question, and uh, um, maybe let me respond in this way. Uh, current college education in Japan is only for children. Children means uh, between 18 to 20, 22. But uh, in that case, uh, colleges in Japan belongs to the declining industry because our customers is uh, sharply declining. So we have to find the new customers that is mm -hmm. already graduate university uh, or high school graduate who are working for the company or self-employed. And even the elderly people who has uh, enough money and enough time and uh, they want to educate themselves more and they are growing population. So that's why it, it's it's a kind of a lifetime uh, education, which Minister of Education advocated for many years. But uh, so university has to change, not only targeting to young uh, people, but uh, senior people as well. Uh, but senior people are very critical to the uh, content or quality of the education because they have to pay by themselves. While the younger ones, they don't care because their parents pay the money. And so most of the mind of the students are like labor. They try to, how do you say, uh, get the degree at lower cost. <laughs> so that spoils our uh, professors. So I welcome the senior students coming to the universities who are very critical and complain the quality of the school. And uh, so the, that improves the quality of the school at the same time. It's a consumer-oriented education. And then I think uh, uh, that education will maybe more beneficial uh, to uh, the society as a whole, you see. So just uh, one last, very quick question yeah, for me, if yeah. you don't mind. If the government has the policy, yeah. uh, which is now getting closer and closer, yeah. of 30% by 2020, yeah. is there a task force, is there a group in the Ministry of Health, La Labor, and Welfare, MHLW, to focus on precise, practical ways to get to the goal? Well, I don't think so. At least the Minister of Labor is not very enthusiastic. Uh, because we've, we've just concluded that almost all of this depends on labor yeah. practices. Yeah. And just to no. wonder, yeah. so, wouldn't there, shouldn't there be a group like that? 
Uh, if, well, that should be the group uh, directly under the leadership of Prime Minister mm -hmm. in Kante, you see, Cabinet Office, because each ministry in Japan stick to the vested interest or uh, stick to the current uh, regulations. And so that's why there's always a, a power struggle between the prime ministers uh, who are looking for the uh, for the country's interest and uh, each ministry which uh, represent individual or local interest. So it's not uh, necessarily the case uh, as a conflict between bureaucrats and politicians. It's a conflict between bureaucrats and between politicians. And uh, that's my observation. Thank, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, let's give Dr. Yeshua a hand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We, we have just a little ceremony before we go home. Just a, a few final, final remarks. First of all, thank you everyone for your excellent questions. That really was a helpful way of bringing both presentations together um, and shows the importance of interactive uh, dialogue. I uh, would like to thank both President Bondo and Professor Yashiro for spending the time to share your very valuable insights. You have contributed very much to our advocacy area, efforts in this area and we hope to continue to collaborate with both of you going forward. Um, it was very encouraging to hear from both of you that now close to 50 percent of four-year university uh, students are, are women and that will very much help uh, us realize the goal of 30 percent of, of management positions and executive positions being held by the by women in the future if not in 2020 hopefully soon after 2020 um, I think in response to, to Jim's question about how do you get uh, the current generation and future generations to own their career I think both of you set a very fine example of the importance of over overseas education um, and spending time working outside of Japan. So thank you for being role models in that regard. Um, it's, it's often through those experiences that one gets to talk to others that have ownership of their career and get ideas and to be inspired by um, areas of, of study and work that one may not have had the opportunity to discover staying, staying in one's home country. Uh, President Bondo, um, thank you so much for having the vision more than 10 years ago in identifying the importance of, of setting a, a goal of, of 30%. Um, thank you as well for sharing uh, so many of the mindset barriers that need to be addressed. Um, this, this goes also with, with what uh, Professor Yashiro said about the resistance to change. Well, we can't address change unless we understand what's at the root of, of, the, of the problem. And you both did an excellent job and sharing your insights as to what some of those barriers are. And President Bondo, thank you as well for your practical advice, um, such as the need for more mid-career training uh, for men and women, uh, as well as the idea of increasing overtime pay to give companies the incentive to require more efficient work in focusing more on performance. And Professor Yoshida would like to thank you uh, as well for highlighting the many areas where labor reform is needed and the importance of neutrality in labor policy as well as finding ways to identify more alternative work arrangements as well as flexibility in, in the workplace. Those are very important contributors to further stimulating the Japanese economy. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and I hope everyone, we have certificates of appreciation, I hope everyone will extend a very warm ACCJ thank you to our, our excellent speakers today. So thank you very much. <laughs>